Member Statements. Member for Kingston, the Islands. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I want to take this opportunity to mention a special arts event going on in Kingston this week. The Kingston Writers' Fest is an event that we are very proud of as a city. Beginning on September 26, this five-day festival features over 40 events celebrating the written and spoken word. It is run by its passionate artistic director, Barbara Bell, and its dedicated team of directors and volunteers. This year, the Kingston Writers' Fest is celebrating its 10th anniversary, and over the past 10 years, it has attracted writers famous throughout the world. Writers such as Nobel Prize winner J.M. Coetzee, Booker Prize winner Margaret Atwood, Peter Carey, Annie Prue, Thomas King, and many, many more. The list includes 53 Governor General Award winners, two Pulitzer Prize winners, and 10 Giller Prize winners. The Kingston Writers' Fest is an excellent example of how the passion of the constituents of, the Kingston, of Kingston and the island brings together world-class talent in the setting of our historic city. It is events like these and the embracing and promotion of culture that help make Kingston and the islands the incredible place that it is. If any of you are nearer Kingston this weekend, I urge you to take some time and attend some of the events. I want to wish the Kingston's Writers Fest the best of luck this week and say that I cannot wait to see what the next 10 years holds in store for this wonderful festival. Thank you. Thank you. Member Statements. The member for Halton. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm proud to represent a riding that has many family owned apple farms like Bousfield Apple and Cider, Spring Ridge Farm, Willis Family Fruit Farm and Shirley's Farm, Mr. Speaker, as you know, which is actually on a border of both of our ridings. Bousfield's Farm is a certified organic farm that is run by third-generation Bousfield family. They produce over 20 different kinds of apples, Mr. Speaker. Apples are not only a great source of nutrition, they also add to our economy in Ontario and the region of Halton in a very big way. According to the study by the Ontario Apple Growers, the apple industry in Ontario generates an annual economic activity of over half a billion dollars and generates over 5,000 jobs in the province of Ontario, Mr. Speaker. We more than pull our weight in the Halton region by contributing almost 15 per cent of the total apple crop in Ontario each year. In celebration of this year's apple crop, I was proud to showcase some apples from Bows Fields today in both lobbies, and I hope that every member in this House had an opportunity to enjoy one. Mr. Speaker, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank all apple farmers in Milton and across Ontario and for all of the contribution they make towards our economy each and every day. Thank you. I, I thank the member from Milton. Statements, the member for Beaches East York. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Last Friday, in my riding of Beaches East York, I met with a group of brave, thoughtful individuals who had all been injured on the job, but who had been denied compensation from the Workplace Safety and Insurance Board. Among them were the phenomenal women of inspiration, all of whom are injured worker women who got together to fight for their rights as injured workers, but also to create a space for mutual support as women, as mothers, as caregivers, and to cope with their feelings of isolation and grief. Among them, too, was a constituent. Ken used to own a home in Mississauga. He had a wife and a family, but then he was injured on the job. WSIB refused him compensation, blaming a high school sports injury for the condition that left him unable to work. Over time, he lost his home and his family broke up. Ken struggled with mental health issues, poverty, addiction and homelessness. He was forced onto ODSP, a social program that is not meant to and should not be used to support injured workers. Ken and the injured workers who came to see me spoke to me of the myriad ways in which workplace injuries had pushed them into poverty and struggles with mental health issues that they had never known prior to their injuries. They passed along a petition that I will be tabling shortly. Let us act to make the WSIB what it was intended to be, a fund that gives workers this quick and speedy resolution to workplace injuries. Member statements. The member for Brantford Brant. Good afternoon, Mr. Speaker. 
I stand here today to bring attention to an initiative that is occurring at Brantford Brant on September 29th and 30th. The dark legacy of residential schools in Canada is one that still haunts us today. It is vitally important that we do not forget what happened in these schools. The Woodland Cultural Centre, formerly known as the Mohawk Institute Indian Residential School, was a residential school in Brantford. Like other residential schools, the Mohawk Institute attempted to deprive Indigenous children of their cultural heritage. Parental rights are a mainstay of any society. To contemplate that just a few decades ago, generations of our youth were separated from their parents without consent deeply troubles me, and we have to do our best to make this right. This continued until 1970, when the Mohawk Institute closed its doors. In 1972, the Woodland Cultural Centre took its place with the goals of promoting Indigenous crafts and culture, as well as acting as a concrete reminder of the cruelty that was inflicted on Indigenous children in the residential school system. On September 29th and 30th, the Woodland Cultural Centre will be hosting a gathering of survivors of residential schools. This gathering will serve as a place where survivors of the horrors of the residential school system and their family can be honoured. Here, survivors will be able to come together and encourage each other on their journey towards healing. Thank you. Everyone is welcome. Member statements. The member for Kitchener Centre. As the Yoruba proverb says, a sentence may ruin a case, a sentence may mend a case. I would like to take a moment to explain why Ontarians are asking the Premier to denounce Faith Goldie. Speaker, like many in my riding of Kitchener Centre, I was worried when I saw photos and video of the Premier of Ontario smiling and posing with someone who so many had already labelled a white supremacist. After reviewing question period yesterday, I was further disheartened because it became clear that the Premier and his caucus did not understand that you cannot do anti-racism work while posing with a person who holds white supremacist views. Today, the Premier said, and I quote, I totally denounce, I repeat, denounce, denounce, denounce anyone who wants to talk hate speech. But how can this government claim to denounce hate speech while not publicly distancing themselves from those with anti-Semitic and anti-immigrant views? I've called on my PC colleagues in Waterloo Region to denounce Faith Goldie and the views that she represents. Ontarians want to hear the Premier say that he does not feel comfortable with Ford Nation being associated with Faith Nation. So again, I offer to speak with any of my colleagues in government to help them mend Ontario with their words and their deeds. This is my promise to you. Thank you. Member Statements, the member for Kitchener, Conestoga. Mr. Speaker, the importance of quality palliative care facilities for Waterloo Region and across the province is only increasing. For example, based on the most recent numbers provided by Stats Canada, we know that there are going to be 25,000 people over the age of 85 in Waterloo Region by 2036. It is with great enthusiasm that I take the opportunity today to shine some light on a new hospice, the Geese Family Centre, that is being constructed in North Waterloo over the next year. Mr. Speaker, I would like to take this time to highlight, firstly, the positive impact that the Geese Family Centre will have on Waterloo Region, and secondly, the very generous donors whose contributions have ensured that this facility becomes a reality. With its new beds, doctor and client services, and administration and education wing, this facility will provide high-quality palliative care services for patients and their loved ones 24-7. A number of key public and private contributors have come together in financing the construction and eventual operational costs associated with the Geese Family Centre, and they are deserving of recognition here today. Firstly, I would like to recognize the amazing contributions made by Bill and Gert Geese and the rest of the Geese family. As the cornerstone donors of this facility, the Geese family contributed $2.5 million. I would also like to thank Ian and Bettina Cook, who are also deserving of recognition here, with their impressive contribution of $1 million towards this project. Additionally, I'm proud of the work that our government is doing to help get this facility up and running. Most notably, the Minister of Long-Term Health, uh, Minister of Health and Long-Term Care, has committed up to two million dollars of funding towards capital costs associated with, the, associated with the construction of this building. Thank you, sir. The member for Don Valley East. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, today, I rise to talk about an exciting new initiative that's currently being completed in my riding of Don Valley East, in Flemington Park, the neighborhood where I grew up. A fantastic network of community leads and local organizations, the Friends of Flemington Park Group, 
has been advocating for the revitalization of the Flemington basketball court. While the basketball courts already see a fair amount of usage from the community, the lack of proper lighting, safe and adequate seating, and suitable markings and pavement quality takes away from its usability. Earlier this year, MLSE and Drake's OVO brand pledged $1 million over the next three years to refurbish and refresh local community basketball courts. Seeing this new partnership opportunity, Friends of Flemington worked with the City of Toronto and was chosen as one of the four courts across the city to receive support for this initiative. The revitalized courts will open up next month with new markings, nets, backboards, pavement, a redesigned allocated space for people with disabilities, and new seating area. Mr. Speaker, this is just one of the thousands of examples of grassroots-based community organizations across our province that are making huge differences in all of our communities. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank the Friends of Flemington Park for their incredible work and uh, congratulate them for this uh, incredible initiative. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The member for Etobicoke Lakeshore. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. This past uh, Saturday, my family and I attended Leashes by the Lake in my riding of Etobicoke Lakeshore, an amazing annual event hosted by the Etobicoke Humane Society, an organization which I hope to work very closely with. I would like to take this opportunity to thank uh, uh, Christina Escasa, Joanne Hewitt, Karen Heslop, and Nat Natasha Minstry, some of the dedicated volunteer board members of the Etobicoke Humane Society, for their commitment to animal protection and providing ongoing awareness. It was a pleasure to spend the weekend with my family at, at Leisures by the Lake. No event is complete without the commitment from dedicated volunteers who work to strive by offering sponsorships, donating raffle items, raising pledges, or by registering to walk with or without their dog. I brought along my dog, Bruce, who, Bruce, who laughed full of treats and with a ton of attention, and uh, he loved coming to work with me that day. The purpose of this event, over and above uh, of enjoying the last few days of summer by the lake, is to raise the much-needed funds for animal protection at this no-kill shelter. All proceeds from this event will directly benefit the animals in their care. This event, in conjunction with Mimico by the Lake BIA, was spectacular and had something to offer people of all ages, such as a barbecue, pet supplies, and face painting for the children. This relationship is very important to me as I have two rescue pets, Bruce and Edward, and later this term I plan on bringing forward a private member's bill to stop the inhumane treatment of animals and to put an end to puppy mills and kitten mills in Ontario. I hope to have the support from this bill from all sides of the House. I look forward to continuing the work with the Etobicoke Limited Society and other community organization, organizations that enhance our wonderful community. And we're looking forward to adding. And if you are ever looking to add a new pet to your home, please consider visiting the Humane Society first. There are many pets who are looking for their forever home. Member for St. Catharines. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I would like to congratulate the Niagara Wine Community for hosting another incredible Grape and Wine Festival, the largest festival in Canada. Every year, the festival brings in countless people to St. Catharines to celebrate the incredible wine produced by wineries across the region. In employing over 18,000 people, the wine industry is both a staple of the Niagara economy as well as providing of an incredible product that is revered across the globe. Residents in Niagara know there's no better way to unwind after a long, busy week than with a glass of Niagara wine, and I am happy to express my support for incredible product our wineries produce year in and year out. Congratulations on the 67th Niagara Grape and Wine Festival, and thank you to those who have worked tirelessly to put on, on another year of an incredible fun in the heart of the downtown town of St. Catharines. Please join us Saturday, September the 29th for the Grape and Wine Parade in its 76th year, journeying through the downtown of St. Catharines to the historical Montebello Park for a wonderful experience in tasting the VQA wines of Niagara. Member Statements, the member for Peterborough Kawartha. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Back prior to the election in June, uh, Dan Maloney, my CFO, asked me to attend an event this past weekend, and I was quite happy to do it. Jennifer Thompson, the organizer of the event, uh, put together quite possibly one of the best I have seen. For those of you who don't know, this past weekend was the Down Syndrome Buddy Walk. 
It was held for the first time in Lakefield, uh, a small village just outside of uh, the city of Peterborough. We had a goal set this year for 100 walkers, and we were looking to raise $10,000. I'd like to shout out to a couple of people in particular. Police Constable Mark Hubble came in three hours early to bring a, a police vehicle in so that uh, those who were participating would have the opportunity to see it and go through and actually sit, sit in it. We had in total 400 participants. The goal originally was set for 100. Well done. Our initial goal of raising $10,000 was surpassed by 16,000. We raised just over $26,000. More importantly, we raised awareness for Down syndrome and the exceptional people that uh, this, this group supports. In total, we had 26 VIPs who took part in it. I'm quite happy to say it was one of the best events I have attended this year. That's very nice. That concludes our member statements. Reports by committees. I beg to inform.